Hello and welcome to Azure Lane Meta. If after this video you want to help support the channel, please check out my affiliate store at kit.co slash Azure Lane Meta. Welcome back guys. I'm sorry about the delay in getting this video out. I thank you guys for your understanding and your support. So while this isn't in my true fashion of data mine videos releasing before the update comes out so you can make the best assumptions about cubes, we will still review the new ships from the Tower of Transcendence event, the KMS UR event. Because the event has actually been out for a few days, I won't go into all the hype into the patch notes because you guys have probably seen that. All I will say is that if you aren't interested in purchasing any of the skins, but you are still looking to spend money, there is a ring pack, so don't forget about that. All right, before I get into the ships, I do want to talk about farming and what you guys should be farming. There's not going to be any new equipment for this event, which was a little surprising, but we don't have any new equipment to farm or even buy in the shop. In terms of where to farm, there's not really a great choice here. D3 is where we're going to farm so that we can get the most points per oil with the new oil cap. It also is going to give us a barrage HE gun as well as the old purple HE gun as well. Both HE guns are pretty much power crept and not really that great late game these days because, you know, most enemies are medium and heavy armor. But if you're a newer player, those are nice things to pick up. They are barrage guns, but for the most part, we're only farming for points in this event. Of course, we have Magdeburg that's going to be in the event shop along with all of the PR and DR prints that you need to pick up. Always nice to get purple plates as well. We do have the new cognitive arrays that are coming with event shops. So those are must pickups for pretty much everybody. So make sure you buy those out. Otherwise, once you hit that buyout points on the event, you can pretty much stop. There's not really any need to farm. We can save our oil for another day. And with that, let's get into to the ships i have read through these this time so this isn't going to be my typical like first take and first look because i have seen these before unlike in a lot of the other videos where i'm reading it literally for the first time but hopefully this could give more insights into the ships now that i've had some time to process what they do i mean not really I haven't really had that much time to process this at all, but the point is I've actually taken a look at them before recording this, so it's not my first take. I haven't even pulled on this banner yet. Anyway, we'll start with the UR because I'm sure that's what most of you guys are interested in and screw my watch time. Ulrich von Houten is a UR battleship sister to Frederick de Grasse. And just like I thought on my live stream, when people are asking for my predictions and my wish list, she's actually going to be very similar to Frederick, but with less HP and less firepower. So we're looking at a slightly weaker ship in the base raw stats, but we do have to get and consider skills here. Continuing on with my amazing predictive skills. Skill number one is a 100% chance to fire a barrage when she fires the main guns and enemies that are hit by the barrage are slowed by 30% for three seconds. This is basically what I wanted for the most part, what I kind of talked about because she's a spider, she's going to have a slow barrage on strike. We can time that with whatever gun that we give her. So we can use her kind of like a Duke of York and just kind of time that first shot so it slows and we can then have like New Jersey come in behind and do massive amounts of damage damage. This is what that barrage looks like. It's pretty basic, but it does do the job of doing the slow, so it looks good enough for me. Now, for the second part of this skill, she has another barrage. This is a separate barrage. It's going to look like this. It looks very similar to FDG's barrage in the way that it shows up, and it has torpedoes, which is nice. This occurs whenever a ship enters the range. This range is 100 units of this ship, and it fires that barrage. 100 units is like a little bit further out than Bismarck's extended auxiliary range. The cooldown on this is going to be 15 seconds, so it's not going to be constantly proccing for every suicide boat that comes into range going to be like every 15 seconds. So this skill is basically two different barrages that are attempting to achieve a different goal. The first barrage is going to be for boss fleeting and when you're trying to slow down a moving enemy that has a lot of HP and you can have somebody else to back it up. In fact Ulrich can back herself up because she's got good firepower already so she can be doing the backup. She doesn't even need someone else although you'll likely bring someone else like New Jersey to help her out. And the second barrage is actually more of a mob fleet skill which will deal with the suicide boats when they come into range and some of the lighter armor enemies that you know fill up the 
screen and you can take them all out at once. The torpedoes are a nice touch that can help some mid-level enemies that are a little bit stronger than, you know, getting killed by just the barrage, but, you know, the torps might finish the job. I like this skill. It makes her kind of an all-arounder. For skill number two, she gets a flat 15% buff to firepower and reload. Frederick actually has typically a better buff, although her buff is kind of janky based on the HP that she has, but I would generally consider it better. But the 15% reload is considerable. And because it's permanent, you don't have to work with the jank. I like it. All good. If she's equipped with an HE gun, deal 15% more damage versus light and medium armor enemies. This is interesting because typically we want AP guns and her being locked to HE. It doesn't really lock her, but it gives more of an incentive to be an HE. This tells me that she's going to be more in the mob fleet category, potentially, although skill number one's barrage really is going to be good for boss fleets. Really all around. The 15% against light. I mean, I guess if you're fighting light enemies, you're going to want HE anyway. This really helps make it where HE gun is better in the medium category. Usually we would recommend that you use AP ammo against medium enemies. However, this makes it a little bit more of a toss up when she used the HE gun. The second part of this skill is the part that interested me the most about this ship. Obviously the first skill was kind of a wish list skill, but this part is interesting. I was not expecting this. If this ship is not the flagship, main gun load time is reduced reduced by 50%. Main gun damage is reduced by 45%. So it does work when she's not the flagship, so that allows her to pair with ships that need to be in the flagship. Even FGG prefers to be in the flagship for her barrage. So we can put her off flag. And this reduces load time by 50%. This just cuts her load time in half. That's a lot of extra firing. That gives us a lot of potential to time sync with that first skill. I really like this because now we can have really whatever gun we want on her and kind of manipulate when her salvo is coming out and then having three seconds afterward have everyone all of your damage come out on a enemy that is slowed i really like this it helps with autoing a lot the interesting part about this is damage re is reduced by 45 percent now she is firing twice as much so that makes sense so she's going to actually you know not do much more damage than she would otherwise a little bit more technically although with the variance i don't know about that like missing and stuff like that anyway the point is we are going to reduce that damage. But the important part here is if we're talking about her being a mob fleet, -er, which I'm not saying she should be, but she is all around. So she could be used in either or notice this is 45% damage reduction. This is going to stack with the damage reduction that comes off of running out of ammo, which means you'll actually have damage reduction of over a hundred percent if the fleet that she's in is out of ammo. And that means she won't do any damage. I think the game will change this to just doing one damage because they can't really do zero damage so i think she'll do one damage per shot which it will be actually really funny to see a ur shooting one damage maybe i should get a clip of that anyway the point is you need to be very more careful about ammo when you're using her as an off flag mob fleet honestly because you can just switch the order you can put her in the flagship if that ever occurs it's not really a big deal but it is something funny to note lastly we have the final skill and what's a ur without a cross fleet barrage first things first before we get into that she gets plus 20 percent crit damage just stagnant all the time I mean, cool. Not going to object to that. Basically just giving her a shell. Cool. When other fleets in the same sortie enter their first five battles. So this is the fleet that she's not in. So if it's, you know, in normal maps, it's the other fleet. If it's in Operation Siren, it's the other three fleets. And it's only for the first five battles. And this ship is afloat. Of course, if she sinks, which she shouldn't be, she has almost 10k health. If she sinks, though, this skill won't be active. KMS ships in the other fleet take 5% less damage and deal 10% more crit damage oh i thought that was gonna say just more damage but just more crit damage honestly it only affects kms and it's not actually that big of a deal but for kms stands this is gonna really help for mono kms fleets trying to do world 14 world 13 operation siren so this cross fleet buff is kind of nice for kms stands but it's not something that anyone else is really gonna play around too much fdg being the only real kms ship that you're gonna want to like use for not memes and a gear of course a gear too yeah definitely a gear so in terms of her barrage it looks like this very similar to her basic barrage which is very similar to fdg's barrage no torpedoes this time though and it triggers basically on the same time when the enemy enters a certain range now this range is 85 instead of 100 so it's a little bit shorter range uh or the enemies have to get a little bit closer for it to proc 
Anyway, when they get in within a range of 85 of any of the fleet's backline, you fire a cross fleet support barrage that we showed earlier. It has a five second cooldown though, which is actually really short instead of the 15 second cooldown. There are a max of six triggers. So if the battle lasts longer than 30 seconds and it, you know, triggered six times, then you aren't going to get more. But honestly, the fact that it triggers at 85, that's still a far range. It's still going to work for suicide boats for the most part. And it's only a five second cooldown. So it's going to go bam, bam bam uh it's gonna go quick so actually this is a really good cross fleet barrage particularly the kms buff is kind of nice if you want to use a gear fdg or whatever but definitely the the barrage is nice so overall this ur is not new jersey i would say she's definitely worse than new jersey no doubt about it she's more utility she's more all around her i really do like the cross fleet stuff you know i wanted the slow i'm not talking too much about it but that's something that i wanted and we got it. The ability to manipulate when she fires her salvo and thus when the barrage comes out is really nice. She has a lot of utility and I think KMS fans are going to be very excited about her. Doesn't take New Jersey's spot, which is exciting for somebody who really likes New Jersey. And of course, New Jersey won the popularity poll. In terms of FDG, I would say she's probably a little bit better because she has more of a purpose. She can be better in bossing. However, they're really on par. I would put them about the same tier level in terms of power fdg hopefully getting a fate simulated plus five soon which will maybe take her back on top but i would say she's maybe if i had to give a slight edge to ulrich over frederick pre fate simulated five we'll see what fate simulated five does for frederick but overall the difference between these two ships is pretty negligible they are trying to do a slightly different thing i like ulrich a little bit better though if i had to pick one to use not necessarily design. Let's move on to the next ships. I won't spend nearly as much time on these because they're not as exciting as the UR. Of course, I'm going to be spending my cubes to get her all the way to pity if that's necessary. In terms of the other ships, they're not as exciting, but we will go through Prince Aldebert next, who is probably the most exciting out of the remaining four. We do have a short event this time. Prince Aldebert reminds me a lot of Prince. She's going to be pretty comparable, just like Ulrich was very comparable to FDG. Aldebert is very comparable to Heinrich. In fact, she has a little bit more HP and a little bit more torpedoes at the expense of some firepower. She is going to be kind of like one of those CBs that is torpedo focused, but isn't really a CB in classification. She's going to be a heavy cruiser technically. She's going to be able to equip those CB guns that are the German ones, those purple ones, but not the a gear gun or the a Zuma gun, which is weird because in the code, they're classified all as CB guns, which in theory, it says that she can equip CB guns, but she can only equip the smaller CB guns that are below the caliber. So it's kind of weird when you're looking at it through the data mine, but she's going to be just like Prince in terms of what you can equip and can't. So first skill, she's going to have a 10% accuracy buff, which is going to be helpful if you're trying to aim those arcing shots. If you are going to use one of those mini CB guns, not the real ones, but the mini any German ones that make them feel special. Also, there's a 70% chance to fire a barrage upon firing the main gun, and there's a 10 second cooldown on this barrage. This barrage is so reminiscent of Prince Heinrich as well in the way that it backs up and goes forward. It's nice, it covers a lot of area. Can't really complain about it. Plain and expected, but good. Moving on to skill number two, triggers once every 20 seconds in the battle. If the, her HP is 60% or above, so she has a lot of HP, she gains a 4% HP shield for eight seconds. So 20 seconds into the battle, if she has more than 60% HP, she's going to get a 4% shield. If there are other ships afloat in the Vanguard and this ship is the lead ship, the shield HP value is doubled and this ship takes 50% of all damage the Vanguards would take instead for the eight seconds. So we probably wanna put her in the front She's going to have a pretty tanky body. She's medium armor with 6,146 health, which is going to be able to eat a lot of damage, especially if you're using a destroyer in the back line. If you're trying to use like World 14 or something and you want to use Shimikaze, like she can take that damage, which is nice. The shield also doubles, so it's going to be 8% shield. So really this is an 8% shield because I don't really see much situations where you're not going to want to put her in the lead. Now she gets to eat some of that damage and we can actually 
you know, prep her properly to deal with taking 50% of all the Vanguard damage during that eight seconds. Of course, she has a shield. The interesting part about this skill is if it triggers at the every 20 second mark, so 20, 40, 60, etc., and she has less than 60% of her health, she doesn't actually get the shield, which is odd because when would you want the shield? probably when she's low on health and needs extra survivability. I think the reason they did this is because she is taking 50% of all the Vanguard's damage. So maybe when she's like really low on health, you don't want her to eat the damage from the other ships that they should have been getting. But 60% is actually kind of a high number. And once again, she is pretty tanky and has a shield. But if let's say you are below 60%, when the marker comes and the skill procs well then instead of getting the shield she gets a torp boost this is a heavy cruiser and she's getting a torp boost i mean her torpedo is not bad per se for a heavy cruiser but once again it's a heavy cruiser and she's getting a torp boost instead of the shield and she's supposed to be tanking kind of odd i'm not saying she's bad I'm not saying the skill is bad. I'm just saying it's kind of weird. And then for the third skill, all she gets is this all out assault that happens every six main gun shots. This is pretty standard. Nothing really to say there. Moving on to the last SR, the light cruiser Magdeburg. An interesting aside about her stats though, is she has high anti-air. KMS is a faction notorious for poor anti-air stats. I think right now Nuremberg is the best ship here. She's obviously not higher than Nuremberg's AA stat, but she is another ship in the KMS arsenal that has a decent anti-air stat. So if you're trying to clear through World 12 and World 13 with KMS only, this will definitely be in your toolbox. But nothing too special about these stats. She's just kind of a base light cruiser. Okay, skill number one. For every enemy fleet that this ship's fleet sinks, she gets an extra 6% damage that she deals. This stacks four times. So in theory, on the fifth battle, after the fleet she's in has sunk four enemies, she will have 24% extra damage dealt. It's actually a pretty significant boost. This tells me that she's going to be in that mobbing category because we're going to want her to stack this up. The boss fleet isn't going to deal, you know, four kills. It isn't going to stack four times and we definitely want this to stack four times. Similar to Alabama, man, did we forget about that ship? That ship needs a skin. Anyway, side note, similar to Alabama, not only should she get a stacking buff when she sinks the fleet, she actually also gets stacking buffs when she sinks enemies in battle. She has a 5% accuracy buff and a 5% evasion buff for each ship that she sinks, and that stacks four times. Actually, in fact, stacking four times for that one is going to be pretty quickly into the battle. She's going to get up to that 20% accuracy and 20% evasion. So this skill is actually pretty good. It's a definitely mob fleet, totally mob fleet. We need to be able to kill a lot of easy light enemies and we need to be able to you know go battle after battle after battle so ironically this is going to probably be separate from Ulrich because Ulrich is going to you know not want to run out of ammo you know for her off flag skill and this one she's like just going to get all those buffs and not really going to care skill number two she gets a 15 percent anti-air buff which actually goes above what she already has which was already decent for kms so that's going to put her right on par with nuremberg and if you're going to need something for world 13 and you want to do kms this is definitely a ship you're going to need in your toolbox in the mob fleet specifically three seconds after the battle starts and 70 percent chance Every 20 seconds afterwards, she's going to fire a barrage. I like this. We get the early barrage and we have the chance every 20 seconds afterwards. So we get 3, 20, 40, etc. The first one's guaranteed too. Nice. This is also a torpedo barrage, which is nice. And it has some aim mechanics in it. It's actually solid. Additionally, this barrage is enhanced after the second and fourth battle within the sortie that this fleet is in. So once again, reiterating, this is a mob fleet ship. The first battle or like the boss battle or the PVP battle, it's not going to get that enhanced barrage. You're going to need it in that second and fourth, which are going to be pretty easy to get to, especially since you're going to try and stack four for that first skill. So while that first skill is still kind of warming up, you're going to be getting this enhanced barrage on two and four. Battles one and three obviously are going to be the hardest, but two, four, and anything after four, she's going to be doing a lot of damage. Upon this barrage failing to trigger, so this is a 30% chance on the every 20 seconds rather than the first one, she gets an extra firepower and torpedo boost of 10%. This is actually 
kind of nice. I mean, it's not going to beat out that barrage. You still want it to proc, but it is something that is like kind of a nice fail safe. So you are getting something no matter what every 20 seconds. It only stacks twice, but a 20% boost on firepower is fine. Plus in mob fleeting, your battles shouldn't be lasting more than 40 seconds. And that would still require you to have like a 0.3 squared chance of getting you know, it to fail twice. Oh, and a nice part about this, I didn't even notice this, is if it does stack twice, like let's say the 20 second mark and the 40 second mark, you both fail to trigger your barrage and you get the 20% extra firepower and torpedo now, every barrage chance after that is boosted to 100%. So you can't like fail the barrage again and then not get the extra stat boost. You're guaranteed to get the barrage. This is a kind of a nice little touch. It's going to be pretty irrelevant because it's going to have to be a over a minute battle and you're going to have to be unlucky enough to fail the barrage twice. I mean, potential it's possible, but like not really that big of a difference, but it's just kind of funny that, that they put that in there. And then the final skill is just the all out assault, eight main gun shots. This is pretty standard. Nothing really to show there other than what it looks like. Magdeburg was surprisingly better than I thought. She just didn't really excite me when they, you know, showed her off, but she's actually a pretty good mob fleet for KMS, especially in worlds where anti-air matters in the later maps. So if you are KMS Stan and you want to be, you know, clearing with all KMS, she's a great mob fleet for KMS, especially in maps where AA is important. She's of course in the shop to be purchased. So if you aren't lucky enough to get her with the 0.5% drop you can get her for free by just grinding the event and there's not really anything else in the event to grind for so sure go for that it's not like there's any weapons or anything you need to buy in the shop you just need to get your PR prints you just need to get those cognitive arrays and then after that get Magnaberg. easy all the way have left are the elites I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because they're not that exciting but we do have the light aircraft carrier Elbe she's a light aircraft carrier elite she's stats are garbage she has three fighters and three dive bombers and an anti-air gun so no torp bombers that's pretty sad she has a aviation and accuracy buff of 15% at skill number one but the base that she has is literally not even 350 and so buffing that doesn't really matter 80 percent chance to fire a barrage upon this airstrike finishing readying so i mean if you're manualing that makes a difference this extra you know set of dive bombers is nothing too special to be worried about like it's not going to make or break her by any more means the second one is at the start of battle when you're finishing the airstrike with this ship the lead vanguard ship gains a shield that blocks six bullets doesn't matter what damage they do but it's six bullets it's not going to stop any of the you know arcing shots or airstrikes though the shield refreshes if reapplied while it's still active so if the shield you know the shield doesn't go away and it's still there and it's taken like you know, whatever, five bullets in seven seconds, you know, and you do it again, it's going to be eight seconds and six bullets again. If the shield is broken via the bullets instead of expiring, self damage dealt is plus 15% percent and it lasts until the end of the next airstrike with this ship. The ship is garbage, but she cute, but she garbage. And then finally, we have the submarine and the KMS U-boats are just so strong. So there's not really much use in using her. I wonder if they make anything about, uh, the toilet jokes. I actually haven't looked at the skills of this ship. This is the only one I didn't care about. I looked at the other four, but I didn't see this one. So we'll see them. This one is actually going to be my first live reaction. Oxygen is reduced by 10. <laughs> uh, she's already bad stat wise. And then literally first line of first skill. <laughs> Let's take those stats and make them worse. When servicing from running out of oxygen and when retreating, self damage dealt is plus 15%. So once she's out of the water, she can deal more damage, but subs don't want to be out of the water. So she also has an increase in speed when retreating. So when she is retreating and able to deal more damage, technically, she's actually going to retreat faster so that that window is smaller. Of course, it will help her survivability, but yeah. Okay, skill number one sucks. Skill number two, for every KMS uh, submarine in the fleet, self, uh, you know, that's the same wolf pack skill. It's not a, it doesn't buff the other ones, so garbage. And then obviously the last one being her entrance barrage terrible sub don't don't use this there's so many other good subs that are really easily obtainable all right so this event a little bit you know underwhelming for a ur event 
but Ulrich is good and Mandenberg was surprisingly good for that specific role. You know, Prince is, Prince is fine. I feel like if I didn't have Heinrich already, I would be more excited about Aldebert, but you know, Heinrich kind of does the same thing. I've been using Heinrich for a while. A gear is out, like a gear is just better. You know, we've had ships like this. It's fine. I'm glad she's out. Some people are gonna be really excited with that new skin. <laughs> Um, the fact that we didn't have any new equipment was a little bit disappointing. Usually with URs, we get like cool new equipment. Like, you know, New Jersey, we had the URHE gun. And even for Shinano, we had the black torpedo auxiliary, which was very unique. Still very unique. A lot of people probably wishing they had more of those right now. Point is, we got no new equipment, so that's kind of disappointing, to be honest. I would have liked to see something we could grind for that. Of course, given my current circumstances, it's probably better that I don't have to put too much effort into this event. But once again, it is the, like, New Year Christmas event that's big for all the people who are off on winter break or something like that, so... Usually you want to give them something very exciting to grind for. It is less ships than usual, but it is KMS as they are running out of actual historical ships. So that kind of makes sense. Not a big deal there for me personally. I am probably still going to pull until we get Ulrich. Actually, because of fleet tech, we're probably going to pull for everybody here. It's not going to be too hard. I got plenty of cubes. But yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys in discerning, you know, what's what with these ships. I apologize once again for this being late and, um... Hopefully, hopefully it never happens again or anytime soon. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Take care and have a great new year. Hopefully 2022 is a better year.